Hi guys, Yannick here for Yannick's Photo School. Today we're going to be looking at an effect that was created a while back uh, before the d days of digital by a photographer called My Michael Orton. And he created the, the famous Orton effect, which is basically creating a dreamy state of mind in your photos. Um, so you, you won't use that on every single photo, but it works well for romantic photos, baby pictures, uh, where where um, positive emotions are in, or if you just want to create a softer feel to your photos. Basically what it does um, is that it creates a blurry effect, but uh, keeping the sharpness of the image. But also, more specifically in the Orton effect, it actually sh saturates the colors a little bit. So I'll, I'll be showing you two ways of doing this. The first one's a little longer, but it's not that long. And the second one's a bit of a shortcut way. You can choose whichever way you prefer uh, and tweak it as you see fit. Basically, Orton, uh, the photographer, would take a photo properly exposed and in focus and would take another, fo another photo completely out of focus and slightly overexposed. And he, he would combine both of them um, and sandwich them together and make the Orton effect. And we can do that easily now here in Photoshop. So let's get right to it. All right, here's our image of some lovely roses for Valentine's Day. I know we're far away from Valentine's Day since it's springtime, but uh, it works well for this effect. So let's get right to it. First thing we need to do is to duplicate our layers. So let me bring the layers palette up here so you guys can see it. There you go. And Control J to duplicate your layer. And the first thing we want to do is apply a Gaussian blur to this image. Now go into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now I like to use a radius of around 20 pixels. I wouldn't go over that. I, I would go maybe slightly under between, between 10 and 20 to get the proper effect. And I like 20 for this image, so let's leave it at that. All we need to do after that is click OK. And now you're saying, OK, Yannick, that's nice. It's a nice blurry image. What's next? Well, I'll show you. Next thing we need to do is to simply re reduce the opacity of this layer. We click on this, and we can either enter a value or use a slider. And it's basically going by eye to see what fits for you. Uh, for this image, I like around 40%. I think that looks really good. Let's look at a before and after. You see how it softened it up, but it doesn't look really, really unsharp. Um, what we can do is zoom in at 100%, and uh, we can we can then, we can then here, let's look at the center here. We can then have a look at the sharpness of the image. And as you can see, it's pretty sharp. If we look at before and after, the sharpness is still there. But if you want it a tad sharper, select your background layer, your bottom layer, and then just go into Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen or Unsharp Mask, whichever one you prefer. And just play with the settings. I like the radius of one pixel, and then I play with my amount, which is 100% as my default. Um, and then I just click and unclick the preview button. And it gives that little crispiness in there that I like. So I'm just going to say OK. And if we look at our original image and our final image, let's zoom back and see the full image. So before and after, we created that nice dreamy feel to it, and that's perfect. Now we, we don't need to uh, adjust the saturation in this image. It's, the reds are pretty bright as it is. In some images, I might want to boost the saturation to get the proper Nor uh, Orton effect. Um, but this one looks as is pretty good. Now, the second way of doing it, all right, let me just delete this top layer here. Uh, we'll duplicate our layer again. And we'll apply our Gaussian Blur again. Blur, Gaussian Blur, 20 pixels. And this time, instead of reducing the opacity, what we're going to be doing is simply going into our layer channels here. Um, not channels, but layer modes. And selecting Overlay. 
Now, for this image, as you can see, if we look at before and after, it went completely whacked in the colors because it oversaturated the colors. What we can do to bring that down, actually, the effect's a bit strong, so I'll, I'll just bring it down a little bit, maybe to 75% or so. I would go after that by selecting my layer, uh, just going into Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and then just bring that saturation down of the top layer until we got the desired saturation. Now if we look at before and after, that has more of an Orton effect than the first one we did. And the reds are slightly saturated. The background is uh, contrasted, uh, which would be more proper to an Orton effect. And all I did was uh, change my layer, adjust my layer mode to overlay. You can also try soft light. It can create a different effect. Uh, maybe not as contrasted. Not, not a big difference here. Now, this is how, these are the two steps of doing it, but you don't necessarily, like I mentioned before, have to do it on flowers. You can also do it on people. Uh, it can create a nice mood. Now, let me close this image, bring up a people image, and uh, let's go right to it. Control J, filter, Gaussian blur. Layer mode, overlay. Boom. Nice effect. Before and after. You might think it's too strong in the colors. I sometimes think that the skin tones are too orangey. So again, into the uh, mo image adjustments, hue saturation. I'll bring that saturation down just a little bit to get rid of the oranges. And click OK. And you got a really, really nice Orton effect going here. And I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial on how to create the Orton effect. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.